from Fenway Park in Boston, Massachusetts. Welcome to New York Yankee baseball this afternoon. The New York Yankees take on the Boston Red Sox. And a good afternoon. Welcome to New York Yankee baseball. Spencer Ross along with Bill White. The finale of this three-game series. And Bill White, a lot different than the opening series here at Fenway Park way back in April thus far. A lot different, and uh, Spencer, the Yankees moved within seven games of the Toronto Blue Jays, which is a lot more important from the Yankees' standpoint. The Yankees, by winning two straight up here, the Blue Jays have lost two straight. If the Yankees can get within four, getting down into the stretch, uh, I think, since the Blue Jays haven't been there before, it could be quite interesting. That's a very important factor, isn't it? I mean, uh, that pressure can get to a, to a particularly young ball club. It can really get to any ball club, but particularly a ball club that's never had that kind of uh, late season pressure. If it were Baltimore, you're chasing four back, it would be a little bit different. And also the Tigers, if you're chasing, uh, if you can get within four or five, it would be a little bit different because they, too, have been there last year. Well, this afternoon, Ron Guidry will pitch the finale of the series against Roger Clemens of the Red Sox. The Yankees got another good ball game out of Joe Colley yesterday afternoon. And Colley, of course, they kept pushing Colley. He mm. kept the flirting with danger, but he, he hung around long enough to get some relief help. And if Joe will just go out there and concentrate all the time, get a little mad, I think he'll start completing ball games. But he's 110 now, so you can't get on that. Well, he's 10 and 5 this year, 9 and 2 last year. You, you, you total those two numbers up. Uh, that's 19 and 7 over two seasons. That's, that's a pretty good mark. Well, and here's a guy who couldn't uh, advance to the big leagues in mm -hmm. the uh, Atlanta Brave chain. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of kids who are playing baseball in the minor leagues who are overlooked in, in that mm -hmm. same way. And you'd like, you'd like for expansion to come along, perhaps, and give them a chance. Well, the Yankees this afternoon will be shooting for their third in a row. As Bill mentioned, Yankees are now within seven of the Toronto Blue Jays. Toronto was beaten last night by Kansas City. Uh, the Blue Jays had been playing good ball up until this series. And the Yankees suddenly, uh, that little break, the strike, seemed to have awakened them. Well, it's been, it's been a seesaw season for the Yankees when they went on that uh, big uh, winning tear and they got within a game and a half or so, and then they went out on a road trip and played badly. But now uh, it depends. You know, it might turn a little bit. Maybe the Yankees will run off eight or ten in a row here. They've already won five in a row. Maybe the Blue Jays, who are due to, to lose some ball games, will lose four or five more in a row. And then you're right back in this thing. Well, the Yankees have had a lot of heroes in this series thus far. Don Mattingly yesterday, defensively, one of the writers in the Boston paper said a quote, and I'm not putting him down, but he said, known more for his bat than his glove. Well, I don't think he's seen Don Mattingly play too much first base if he says that. Well, I'm sure he has. The same old thing. He's probably talking about Eddie Murray as the best defensive first base in the big leagues. But uh, he'll. Uh, we've seen Mattingly. We know what he can do with the glove. Okay, the Yankees will send Guidry to the mound. Roger Clemens will be on the mound for the Boston Red Sox. We'll be back with well, New well, York let's, Yankee let's baseball. Let's keep it here for a little while, okay. Spence. Let's keep it here for a little while because uh, Roger Clemens is just getting out on the mound. The ball game will start in just, uh, just a second. Participating advertisers in New York Yankees baseball are your Toyota dealer and the extra value package trucks that can now save you big bucks on added features Budweiser for all you do this buds for you Citibank when you bank at Citibank it's your city your tri-state Dodge dealers will invite you to test drive poetry in motion the 1985 Dodge Lancer and by the New York Yankees final game of this series let's check the Yankee batting order Ricky Henderson leading off playing center field Don Mattingly in the second slot Dave Winfield bats third Ken Griffey in left field bats fourth the designated hitter Don Baylor number five Willie Randolph in the sixth slot Butch Weiniger behind the plate Mike Pagliarulo bats eighth and Bobby Meacham will bat ninth Ron Guidry will be on the mound for the home team the Boston Red Sox Dwight Evans leads off plays right field Wade Boggs Bat second, Bill Buckner third, Jim Rice in the cleanup spot, Tony Armas back in center field. He started yesterday's ball game. Mike Eastwood, the DH, Marty Barrett at second base, Jackie Gutierrez at shortstop, and Mark Sullivan behind the plate. Defensively for Boston, Bill Buckner at first, Marty Barrett at second, Gutierrez at short, Wade Boggs at third. Jim Rice, Tony Armas, and Dwight Evans, the outfield from left to right. Mark Sullivan behind the plate. And on the mound, the right-hander, Roger Clemens, who has come back from a sore shoulder. Hasn't seen much activity, really, since the month of May. He has a record of 7-4, and four, and Ricky Henderson steps in. Bill? All right, Spencer Henderson uh, batting at 348, 17 home runs, 50 runs batted in, and the ball game is underway. It'll be Henderson batting Lynn Winfield against the young right-hander from the University of Texas. Roger Clemens, he's won seven and lost four so far this year. So far in the series, Henderson three for nine. 
Gutierrez at short. And there's one away. Henderson bouncing out six to three for the first out. Henderson came into this ball game with that 348 batting average in that race. It's uh, George Brett at 355, Wade Box 353, Henderson 348, and Mattingly, who steps in now, has moved into the fourth spot at 326. And Mattingly has yet to drive in a run in this series, and the Yankees have won two straight. So they've done that uh, without at least the RBI productivity of Don Mattingly. But as Spencer mentioned earlier, he saved the ball game yesterday for them with his glove. So Mattingly at 326 with 18 home runs and 90 runs batted in. He's four for eight in the series, and he's been slapping the ball off the wall. At least he did that in the last game. There's a strike. Clemens with a good arm. He's got a good fastball. Working on a better breaking ball. He's only 20, no, he's 23. He's 23 years old, 23 that's, on August 4th. That's worth an only. <laughs> <laughs> two strikes on Mattingly you can see he's got a little heat I mentioned that sore shoulder he pitched on May 27th didn't come back till June 11th pitched only three times from June 11th through July 2nd and then uh, they had him pitching that Hall of Fame game up at Cooperstown and he came back last week against Kansas City and went six innings well he was nine and four last year in his rookie season but did not pitch after August 31st he injured his right arm and was sidelined the rest of the season. So the count remains no balls and two strikes on Don Mattingly. Understand that the severe heat here in Boston is causing technical problems with our video and I hope uh, you'll just bear with us until we get those problems corrected. It is warm here in Boston. One and two on Mattingly. Of course, on Friday, Bill, uh, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they had no power here. And there was a bit of a chance that uh, Friday night's ball game might have been called off. Out of play down the left side. So far, Clemens has shown nothing but heat. Hard slider, good hard fastball. And it's one and two on Mattingly. Look at another big crowd here. In game one, they had 33,767. Yesterday, 33,009. And this crowd will be 33,000 plus. A lot of people opted uh, to go to the shore, though. But not the baseball fans. Now they're here. <laughs> one and two on Mattingly. That'll be foul off first base. Buckner will play it. Yankees winning yesterday. It's their fifth straight win. And they're now three and five against Boston. Overall, after losing the first three games of the season here. They won the opener 10 to 6. Rich Bordy in relief over Bruce Hurst. Then the Yankees yesterday won 7 to 3. Joe Cowley won his 10th over Oil Can Boyd. Cowley now 10 and 5. There's a curveball. Maybe you better not throw that. He's going to break it way up there, but you can break it way up there when you're way ahead in the count. Now it's two balls and two strikes on Mattingly. Clemens 6 4 goes 205. And now Mark Sullivan, the catcher, wants to uh, talk to the right hander. Sullivan's 26 and uh, actually 27 now, and the son of one of the Red Sox owners and former big league uh, catcher, Haywood Sullivan. Two and two on Mattingly. Lifted to left. It's a fair ball. Rice is there. Two outs. But that ball might slice into the seats foul or go a bit farther than that. But Rice made the play easily. It's tough to tell which way the wind is blowing. It's blowing out, it looks a little bit, Bill, toward, uh, toward left field, where you really don't need too much help in the first place. Well, here's 
Big Dave Winfield. He's hitting 287 with 18 home runs, 76 runs batted in. Yankees have a shot at having three people drive in at least 100 runs this year. Mattingly, of course, has 90. He has the best chance. Winfield with 76. And Don Baylor with 74. Ball one. Winfield three for nine in the first two games with three runs batted in in the series. Right back to Clemens as Winfield falls down and did not leave home plate. The side is retired. Three up and three down. At the end of one half inning of play, the Yankees nothing and the Red Sox are coming up. Defensively for the New York Yankees, Don Mattingly at first base, Willie Randolph at second, Bobby Meacham the shortstop, Mike Pagliarulo at third base, the outfield, Ken Griffey, Ricky Henderson, and Dave Winfield, Butch Weininger behind the plate, and Ron Guidry coming off a 7-3 victory over the Chicago White Sox in which he lost a shutout in the ninth inning, takes them out, looking for his 15th victory of the year. Guidry, 14-4. And uh, after he had won those 12 straight, in a little bit of a rough time, and uh, three starts, Guidry in 25 innings, gave up 16 runs. And uh, then he turned it around with that nice victory against the White Sox. So Guidry, who was beaten by the Red Sox at the stadium back in April 24th, 7-6, to six, will pitch to Dwight Evans, Wade Boggs, and Bill Buckner. A warm, muggy afternoon here in Boston for the season finale. The Yankees have taken the first two. They're now within seven games of first place Toronto. And here is Evans to step in. And here's Bill. All right, Spencer and Toronto playing this afternoon in Kansas City again. In the second inning, it's Detroit and Cleveland tied 1-1. And right here, we have Dwight Evans against Ron Guidry. And Evans went too far on a breaking ball. Evans hitting 241, 12 home runs, 39 runs batted in, two for nine against the Yankees in these two games. Both his base hits doubles. Two runs batted in for Dwight Evans. That's low, one and one. People wonder why the Red Sox aren't up there. Well, you just check their outfield. Rice has been off, uh, Armas has been injured. And Dwight Evans is hitting 241. Well, he's been struggling. Pally Rulo off his glove, and that'll be a base hit for Evans. Bags diving to his left. Ball popped out of his glove. Past Meacham. Evans with his third hit of the series as we watch it again. This ball hit hard. Pally Rulo made the move to his left. And just it seemed like the, the momentum, the force of the ball. Because Pax had that ball in the glove. He uses a big glove. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of a webbing out there that's hard to control. Wade Boggs, 353. Second to George Brett's 355. He's three for eight against the Yankees in this series. Also leads the American League in hits. Mattingly second in that category. Mattingly is number one in the American League in four different departments. Is that including include fielding at first base? No, not I, that's five. Probably five. <laughs> I can't. Uh... RBIs, doubles, extra base hits, and total bases, and second in hits. That could be two. Randolph. Now they'll have Evans hung up and one throw, and they tag Evans, and it's a double play. Evans did the right thing. He stopped, made Randolph go to first base, and he got up and tried to go on to second, and they got him. Well, he did the right thing, too, as we watch it again. First, he's going to run Evans back to first base. Then the throw to Mattingly to retire the batter Boggs, and then Mattingly chases Evans down, and Meacham makes the tag four to three to six if you're scoring on that double play, and there were two men away. Here's Bill Buckner, the first baseman, hitting 289, 12 home runs, 68 runs batted in. All these fans buzzing here because they know the Red Sox do somehow 
hit into a lot of double plays. That's the 144th. The Yankees have hit into 120 and turned 110. Jim Rice has hit into uh, more than 20 percent of those double plays. Well, he's closing in on a new record. Uh -huh. That's why they try to they try normally to to uh, split Rice and Armas. Buckner pulls a Winfield. <laughs> there it is out past the pitcher's mound closer to second base. Buckner will go out to get it with some help from the bat boy. Watch it again. Slips. Get your try to field it, huh? He's one heck of a fielder, but don't try and pick up bats. No, no, no. You'll break a finger. Two strikes on Bill Buckner with two outs. Nobody on base for playing the bottom of the first. No score in the game. Final game between the Yankees and the Red Sox here at Fenway Park this year. Yankees first trip trip here was not a very good one. They lost all three to the Bo Sox as they opened the season here. That's out of play. I was going to try and make a play in that one. <laughs> he did long arms. <laughs> Down remains no balls and two strikes on Buckner. Wasted pitch outside. One and two. looking for his 15th win this year. He's 14 and 4. Ron Romanic of California is 113. Brett Saberhagen of Kansas City is 113. Meacham glasses down. Shallow left side is retired. No runs, a base hit, nobody left. We played one. Yankees nothing, Boston nothing. Well, the same Boston Red Sox will be back at Yankee Stadium uh, next weekend, and it'll feature Italian American Day on Saturday afternoon, August 17th. Fans on hand will be treated to pregame entertainment by Vic Damone and John Amarante and Italian American Yankees Dave Brighetti. Mike Poundirulo and Dale Barrow will take part in the festivities. Good seats still available. Make plans to enjoy the Red Sox series next Friday through Monday, the 16th through the 19th. And remember, Italian American Day, Saturday the 17th, when the Yankees meet the Red Sox. That'll be at 2 p.m. the Saturday game. Originally, that game was scheduled for 8 o'clock at night. They have moved it to an afternoon start. Bill? All right, Spencer, leading off of the Yankees, Ken Griffey, batting cleanup uh, today. And he takes a strike from Clemens. Griffey at 262. Six home runs, 45 runs batted in as Martin uses him to split up Winfield and Baylor, who's on deck. Then we'll get Willie Randolph. One and one. Clemens was the winning pitcher in the College World Series for Texas back in 1983. Texas beat Alabama for the NCAA title out in uh, Omaha. One and two on Griffey. They put together some good baseball teams down at yeah. Boston. Arizona State, Miami. Miami won it again this year. They beat Texas. Came back to, to win two. No professional. This is only his 20, let's see, 35th start or 35th game professionally. He's made one relief appearance.
so far Clemens has not been able to get his uh, breaking ball over. He was high with that one, and it's two and two on Griffey. Out of play, Griffey hanging in. Toronto this afternoon, Danny Jackson will be pitching for the Kansas City Royals. For the Toronto Blue Jays, Bill Musselman with a record of 3 0. And with Blue Jays losing last night, the Yankees now seven behind the Toronto Blue Jays. Well, I see Quisenberry beat Cottle. A battle of a couple of uh, top relief pitchers in that game last night. Kansas City won it 4 3. Jim Sunberg got the home run to win it. Ninth inning. Brett went two for three. That's why he's leading the American League in hitting. Three and two on Griffey. And that's out of play as Griffey makes a Clemens work. They haven't really gotten from Caudill what they had hoped to get, uh, the big stopper. They've gotten some good pitching from uh, Jim Acker. Lavelle's pitched pretty well, but the, this new kid, who they call the Terminator, the Tom Hink Hinky, <laughs> hasn't given up a hit in eight innings yet. A couple of wins, a couple of saves. Sounded uh, down low. Sounded down low? Yeah. I thought that ball four, and it is. Griffey's still there. I think it had to sound low. Griffey's <laughs> Griffey stayed there. And now he goes on the first base, and that's ball four. That sounded uh, like a strike to Griffey, and it yeah. sounded low to home plate umpire Ken Kaiser. Have we given the umpires? Uh, I'll give them. Ken Kaiser's behind the plate. Perhaps a little ticked off at Ken Griffey. That can embarrass an umpire. I gave you the base. Don't stand here. Tim Tashita is at first base. Rocky Rowe at second. And Larry Barnett is at third base. That's the Yankees' first base runner. And here's Don Baylor, who's hitting 244. 19 home runs, 74 runs batted in for Baylor. We're in the second inning. No score in the game. Clemens almost throws the ball over Buckner's head. Baylor was commenting after yesterday's game about the oil can Boyd who went through all his uh, gyrations when he beat the Yankees here earlier. And the Yankees were a little upset about it. Oof. Let's throw it away again. What'd Baylor say? Baylor said it's long season. Shouldn't do that in April. <laughs> I believe the kid ought to go on and pitch that way if it makes him pitch better, though. Yeah. Remember when Mark Fidrich was doing all that? He yeah. became a character. Mm -hmm. And I think boy, Oil Can can do the same thing. They called Fidrich a character. They called Boyd a hot dog. <laughs> I like individuals like that. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you've got good stuff, <laughs> you can get away yeah. with it. If you don't have good stuff, you better not say or show up anybody. Well, Boyd not only does it in the mouth, he talks it also. Uh, and he has some great lines. He had one Satchel Page told him, he said, uh, throw peas at their knees and high riders under their chin. <laughs> <laughs> now on the right field, a little slice. Will it stay fair? Foul ball. Two strikes on Don Baylor. He sliced that right down the right field line, which can tell you just a little bit about how hard Clemens is throwing normally. Baylor hits the ball from left center over, well, actually way foul down the left side. He just pulls everything. Two strikes on Baylor. And that one is slapped foul into the seats. Baylor's telling me a story about when he played for the Orioles. One game here, he had three off the wall for singles. The next day, Earl Weaver called him in and said, you're not playing tonight. Didn't hit any out. <laughs> and he put him in as a pinch hitter late in the ball game. He had a home run to win it. Came back into the dugout and just walked by Earl <laughs> like he wasn't even there. Earl wanted to shake his hand. <laughs> Still 0 and 2 on Baylor. Weaver probably went to his cards and saw where Baylor 
probably didn't hit well against whatever pitcher mm -hmm. the Sox were using then. Must have lost those cards this year. Yeah. Well. Earl Weaver. <laughs> Doesn't have the pitching staff he'd like to have, as Sparky Anderson said. Girls can get a little dumb this year. Well, let's face it, this is not his team. Mm -hmm. They're playing a game over 500. The Orioles are 154 and lost 53, and as of now, they're 13 and a half back. And they really don't have anybody who can stop bad streaks. Uh, Boddicker has been in a tailspin. Flanagan really isn't ready yet. He's pitching, though. Storm Davis has been in and out. Now, look, Ken Kaiser just called a balk. I'll bet you that's Kaiser's 100th balk call. If, he, if you keep throwing the first base long enough, Kaiser will call a balk on you. And Clemens wants to know, what, I, what did I do? Kaiser said he didn't do anything. I just decided I'd call a balk. Stop throwing over there. Let's play the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's too hot out here. <laughs> now John McNamara is coming up. And he's, he'll ask the same question. Why did you call the buck on my pitcher? And Ken Kaiser will go over and explain. We're in the top of the second. We're scoreless. The Red Sox have the only base set in the ball game. This is more discussion time than argument time. Well, Clemens wants to know what he did because he doesn't want to do it again. Let's see what he's doing here. Ah, oh, see that uh, left knee break a little bit? Mm-hmm. He's got that dodger move. Somebody's taught him the dodger move, where you break that left knee and spin off the mound. And that's deceiving the base runner in the eyes of Ken Kaiser. <laughs> Let's watch that front knee. We'll watch that. Watch your front knee. See the left knee move there? See yeah. it move? In fact, he bent both knees, and he turned and went to first base. That's a good move if you can get away with it. But don't try it with Kaiser. Yes. <laughs> don't try anything with Kaiser. <laughs> Still 0-2 on Baylor. And that's out of play. I think Kaiser calls box in his sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Have to get on him tomorrow. Big fella from uh, Rochester, New York, Ken Kaiser. You've been talking, he's taking off a little week. Yeah. Bounced up, hit Baylor. That'll be a dead ball out of play. The bat bounced down, backed up, and hit the bat again. Count remains 0 2 on Baylor. We're in the top of the second inning, no score in the game. No outs with Griffey down at second base for the Yankees. play that was a breaking ball Baylor just to got a piece of it for an 0 2 count Don Baylor's been up there a long time keeps banging him away foul well you mentioned Kansas City beat uh, Toronto yesterday and the Royals now just two and a half behind California in the West Oakland just three back Strikes a high hard one. Clemens first strike out, and that's the first out in the second. Came in high, and he jams Baylor right here. So that ball tailed back in, it looked like a bit, and it's strike three. <laughs> well, they're going to put a K up for Clemens, yeah. right? Let's put up a C oh. <laughs> for Clemens, <laughs> but a K for the strikeout. Speaking of the K, Dr. K. He won his 12th in a row yesterday for the Mets. 18 for the season. He hasn't given up more than three earned runs in any game that he's pitched this year. That's pretty good pitching. Mets now tied with the Cardinals for first place in the National League East. Montreal five back. Dodgers lead the West by six over Cincinnati and San Diego. Randolph takes the ball high. Willie batting 294. Three home runs. 36 runs batted in. 
One out. Cleveland's taken a two to one lead over the Tigers in the third inning. High again. Two balls, no strikes on Randolph. Trying to figure out what's wrong with the Tigers. And this little note I picked up. One of the things, last year, 22 times, they scored five or more runs in an inning. This year, they've only done it five. It's a little bit of an indication that the offense just hasn't been as good. And the opposition is getting more big innings against them. That's a strike, two and one. Of course, they had some injuries early. Chet Lemon. But Whitaker started off well. Parrish was driving in runs. Gibson was driving in runs and still is. Evans. Threw a fastball by him. It's two and two on Randolph. And on the pitching side, you really, while Hernandez is having a good year, you couldn't expect him to have the kind of year he had last year. It was near perfect. Watch this one. Good fastball. A Randolph way behind on it. And Aurelio Lopez is having a disastrous year for them. And Clemens with good heat here in the second inning. Two and two on Randolph. That's fouled back. And out of play. Griffey wants to seal third base. He's looking over at Gene Michael. Clemens takes a lot of time lifting the left leg up and swaying it back and forth and Griffey would like to get the green light to steal third. Clemens has been throwing basically nothing but fastballs. He doesn't have the, the confidence at least not now at this stage of the game in that curveball. On the ground to Barrett. He'll throw out Randolph in second base and Griffey goes to third. Two outs. If he can get that curveball down today, he could be devastating, <laughs> Bill. Yes, because he's getting it in there in the 90s. Here's Bush Weininger, the Yankee catcher. Three for seven in the first two games. 234 overall, four home runs, 27 runs batted in for Weininger. First game, he got a run batted in with a squeeze in the ninth inning. Yankees won the opener 10-6, won yesterday 7-3. And a strike to Weininger. One and one. Fastball and still getting it by the Yankee hitters. It's three straight fastballs to Weiniger. It's one and two. Let's see. If, let's see if he comes with a curveball here. A one and two. Nope. It's going to be another number one. And right down the middle, Weiniger's caught looking on the side. Is retired. No runs. No hits. A walk and a man left on. After one and a half innings of play, the Yankees nothing, Boston nothing. Let's pause for station identification. It's a lot crowd on hand this afternoon at beautiful Fenway Park. The Yankees and the Red Sox scoreless as we move to the bottom half of the second inning. Red Sox had a base hit in the first, but Wade Boggs bounced into a double play. So Jim Rice, the cleanup hitter, will lead it off. Rice uh, had a good ball game yesterday. He had been slumping. 0 for 14 and then came back yesterday had a home run late in the ball game against Joe Cowley and he will lead it off against Ron Guidry. The people there in Boston have been telling me Bill it, he has become a, an even less patient hitter this year. He's swinging at a lot of first pitches just about every ball game. 
Well, he's a 265, and he's first to pitch swinging here with 19 home runs and 71 runs batted in. Hit his 19th home run in yesterday's ball game as he got all three of his base hits, breaking uh, that 0 for 14 uh, slump. Still a quality hitter. Jim Rice, lifetime. He's over 300 at 303. And he averages 100 runs batted in a game. Uh, it's not a game, he'd be a heck of a player. <laughs> a year for Jim Rice. One and one. Amazing with the superstars, you expect so much. And numbers that Rice has this year, 71 RBIs. Popped up right side. Randolph got a late start. Now he's calling. One away. Willie Randolph, the Yankee second baseman, picked that ball up just a little late. Watch Rice here. He's going to reach out for this pitch, get it just off the end of the bat. Randolph started coming in and then had to retreat quickly. So there's one man away. And the Bo Sox batter is Tony Armas, who started in center field yesterday for the first time since back in June, went 0 for 4. Overall, Armas batting 240 with 16 home runs and 34 runs batted in. He's been bothered by a sore leg. Strike one. RBI and home run champ last year. Two strikes on Armas. An incredible disparity in his numbers between walks and strikeouts. You expect a home run hitter to strike out quite a bit, but Armas has walked five times this year and he struck out 50. Well, I think everybody thinks they can strike out Armas and they'd rather make him swing the bat uh, and then walk him. And he's not selected. He'll go up the ladder on the ball. Yeah. You could just uh, now start up around uh, the chin and keep throwing him up there with Armas. But Gidry decides to waste one outside with a 1 2 count. Strikes, getting his first strike out, two outs. Here we watch it again, the one-two pitch to Tony Armas. And there's a slider, and Armas is down, and there are two men away for the Red Sox. And here's Mike Eastler, they call him the hitman here in Boston. He's hitting 266. Three for eight in the series, a dozen home runs for Eastler, and 49 runs batted in. Fouls a slider back for a strike. They had a great year from him last year. Over 300, 313. Cut off to a slow start, but he's got his batting average up now into the uh, 260s. One and one. John Tudor went to Pittsburgh for Easter in 1983. He also has a 300 lifetime batting average. Cardinals are happy they have Tudor. Mm -hmm. What a year he is having after a slow start. Two balls on a strike on Eastler. Last year batted 313 for the Red Sox and drove in 91 runs. His most productive year in the big leagues. Lifted to left, but uh, Griffey is there. And that'll do it for the Red Sox in the second inning. Three up, three down at the end of two. The Yankees nothing, Boston nothing. This is shown a real good fastball. And the Yankees still looking for their first base hit of the ball game. Clements is a strikeout hitter. He struck out 10 on one occasion this year, nine another time, and eight on two other occasions. But since coming back after that sore shoulder, he has not really been the big strikeout pitcher. A record of seven and four. And he did beat the Yankees back here on April 11th by a score of six to four in that game. He went six innings, gave up six hits and four runs. He walked three, struck out five. Dave Winfield had a home run against him in that one. Mike Pagliarulo will lead it off for the Yankees to be followed by Bobby Meacham and back to the top of the order and Ricky Henderson. 
Clemens is just about ready. So is Bill White. All right, Spencer Ross, Bally Rulo batting 230 for the Yankees. 10 home runs, 37 runs batted in. Youngster from Medford, Massachusetts, about six miles from here in Boston. And a Celtic fan. Strike one on Fags. A lot of theories on uh, bat weight against a fellow who throws hard. A lot of players use a heavy bat. A lot of them like to speed the bat up by using a lighter bat. That's out of play. Seems to be becoming a vogue. Uh, the lighter bat yeah. seems to be very much the fad these days. Even big guys like Ron Hassiel use a 31 ounce bat. Bat companies like that. They save on wood, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> they break a lot of them. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. A little bit high. One and two on Palurulo. Got some family and friends here. We love the pag. Medford's the pag. And he takes another one high. Two and two. Mr. Clements, so far he's had an excellent fastball. And he just strikes out Sally Rulo, strike out number three for Roger Clements. And that's all we're seeing now are fastballs. He threw the curveball a couple of times in the first inning. He has abandoned it now, and he jams Pagliarulo. Strike three. That is three, as Bill said. Three of the last four. So he is really humming him in. Here's Meacham. Meacham at 235 with 34 runs batted in. Hit a home run this year, but it was disallowed when he passed Willie Randolph at first base in Texas. And that's a ball. Base is loaded now. That's low. Two balls, no strikes on Meacham. Bobby will be followed by Ricky Henderson, the Yankee leadoff man. We're in the third, no score. Yankees, no runs, no hits. The Red Sox, no runs, one base hit. And that was nullified when Boggs bounced into a double play. 3 0 oh on Meacham. Check that. Did he call out a strike? Mm -hmm. Late strike call? Okay, that's the, that's the Kent Kaiser quickie. Just oh, okay. zips the hand up real quick. Tough to see. Oh, it's 2 and 1. Now it's 2 and 2. He is quick, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I love his out calls. A little Kaiser kick. <laughs> Let's call it a Kaiser the kick. Kaiser kick. Ken's mother watching uh, the ball game up in uh, Rochester. Over in Rochester. Now it's three and two on Meach. Thinking one of these days, Kaiser's going to wake up from a nightmare and yell, yo, balk. <laughs> <laughs> you balk. <laughs> Barrett throws out Meacham from second base. We're out number two. You know, Bill, you were talking about uh, Meacham's home run where he passed a runner. This Thursday night, weird play. Uh, your former team, the Cardinals, they had runners at first and second. And we watched Barrett here make the easy play at first base. It wound up as a triple play. Terry Pendleton, a line drive to Leon Durham. Who threw to Chris Spire at second base? The throw was wide. Spire was pulled off. Sly Van Slyke was off the bag at first. Spire threw to first. He threw wildly. Van Slyke got up, ran for second. The clock didn't know he was called safe. He went back to the dugout. Van Slyke passed him. Clock got back into action. The throw got away. Van Slyke got caught in another rundown. It turned out to be a triple play. Uh oh, this will be off the wall at least. High off the wall. It'll be a double for Henderson, but he'd better hurry. They're going to have him. No, he's not. Oh, he's called out. 
by second base umpire Rocky Rose. Excellent play by Jim Rice. Looked like Henderson had snuck in on the backside, but Rice made a perfect throw to Marty Barrett. No runs, a base hit, nobody left. We're going to the bottom of the third. That fine play by Jim Rice. No score in the ball game. You learn how to play the wall as it bounced off. And Jim Rice knows how to play this wall. This is his schoolyard. And here's Henderson trying to get it on the back side, but uh, Barrett was there with the tag. But Rice with a good throw from the outfield. Other guys came into your neighborhood. They didn't have a chance playing, playing those walls in the schoolyard. Here's Jim Rice showing just how good you can become when you do it every day, and he does it very well. And here's Marty Barrett, who made the tag on Henderson at second base. We're in the bottom of the third, no score. Barrett hitting 287, five home runs, 44 runs batted in, and a Gidry strike. California leading Minnesota one to nothing in the first inning. They're in the fourth in Cleveland, and the Tigers are down a run. It's Cleveland two, Detroit one. Indians will play the spoiler the rest of this year. You know, they had 72,000 at Cleveland Stadium a couple of nights ago? Probably had one of those, what do they call them, grocery days or something. Uh, I'm tricking you. Was that a football game? That was Bruce Springsteen. Oh. <laughs> Thought the Bronze might have been playing somebody. <laughs> Henderson just caught the ball in, left, in right center off Barrett uh, for the first out. They fill that place up. They have a supermarket day normally once a year. And I don't know if the tickets are given away when you buy groceries or if the grocery store buys out all the tickets, but that'll be normally be around 74,000 people for the Indians. And opening day, they'll, they'll get their 60 to 60 to 70. A big parade in downtown, and that's about 10% of their season attendance. Here's Jackie Gutierrez, the shortstop, and he takes a strike. Gutierrez is batting at 341. Check that 241 with the home run, 15 runs batted in. And there are two strikes on Gutierrez. Took the job away from uh, Glenn Hoffman last year when Hoffman got hurt. Hoffman took it away from this year when Gutierrez got hurt. And Hoffman's hurt again. This kid's bit of batting over 300 against the Yankees lifetime. Doesn't hit too many other people. Pally Rulo off third base for out number two. The guys like Gutierrez, Wayne Tollison, Buck Martinez, who's on the disabled list now with Toronto, Rick Dempsey, guys who don't normally hit other teams seem to do well against the Yankees. There's always been a lot of great pitchers have always had trouble with certain people who don't bother too many mediocre pitches. Well, Gidry hadn't been bothered uh, so far. He gave up a leadoff hit to uh, Evans off Palirulo's glove, and that's all he's given up. And this is Evans swinging through a slider. Check that Mark Sullivan, the catcher, swinging through a slider, hitting at 171 with a home run, one run batted in. Son of Haywood Sullivan. And it's one and one. Weiniger wanted that one. He's had physical problems this year, just came back from a uh, fractured left wrist and reactivated at the beginning of this month. He's only been up 41 times, has seven base hits for the 27 year old Red Sox catcher, Mark Sullivan. I don't think he's seen a slider like Gidry's. He's hitting uh, with the Charlie Lau method, uh, taking that top hand off the bat. Chicago leading Milwaukee 2 0 in the first. Yankees will be in Comiskey Park tomorrow night for three straight games against the White Sox. We'll have all those games for you starting at 8.30 in New York time on our Yankee television network. 
One and two on Sullivan. Low. Well, Toronto didn't score in the top of the first. Kansas City now batting. Yankees seven back. Oh, Kansas City just picked up a run. It's one to nothing, Kansas City. After one. Sullivan down on strikes. Gidry second strikeout. Three up, three down. On the City of Bank scoreboard. It scored at the end of three. Yankees nothing. Red Sox nothing. To school giveaway. So make plans to be on hand. Once again, Delwood Yankee Thermos Day, originally scheduled for Wednesday, August 7th, has been rescheduled for Sunday afternoon, September 8th. No score after three. Yankees no runs a base hit. Both Sox no runs a base hit. Neither team has made an error. And uh, here to carry you along, Spencer Ross. Okay, Bill. Don Mattingly, who fly to left in his first at bat, will step in against Roger Clemens. Clemens has faced one batter over the minimum. He's given up a walk and a hit. But on the base hit, Ricky Henderson was thrown out trying to stretch it into a double by Jim Rice. So Mattingly hitting now at 325. Four for nine in this series. Ball one. Clemens is warm ups for this inning. I was just watching him, Bill, and he was just about all of them, five or six, he was working on the curveball. And he started Mattingly off with a curve there. Up high, one and one right here. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Yankee Television Network. One ball and two strikes to Don Mattingly. Kent Kaiser took that uh, pitch off of his uh, face mask. Good sense of humor. Didn't budge him. No, he's tough. This is a high heart when Mattingly gets under it right there, right on the face mask. It didn't budge him. Didn't move him. No. <laughs> Somebody on the Yankee bench, Billy Martin, yelling at Kaiser <laughs> from the edge of the Yankee bench, and Kaiser yelling back. So it's one and two to Mattingly. No score here in the top of the fourth. And Don Mattingly. It's a clean single to center field to start the fourth inning off for the Yankees. We really can't tell from up here because only the batters can tell, but it looks like Clemens might not have that hard stuff that he had through the first three innings. Pitchers, I'm sorry. Go ahead. But young pitchers have got to learn to, to pace themselves because this game is played in nine and you don't give it all uh, through the first two or three. Give just as much as you need to get by, and I'm not sure if uh, Clemens has lost a little bit off that fastball. He couldn't get that curveball over, as you say. That's all he was doing. Everything was hard through those first three innings. Here's Winfield, who bounced to Clemens in his first at bat, strike one. He checked the swing and fell down. The ball came to Clemens, and Winfield never got out of the batter's box. leading away from first. See the first baseman Buckner playing it uh, legally with but when he plays there you see how far he has to do to carry that glove around attack Mattingly. He's got to carry the glove all the way around his body. If he moved over a little bit and put that left foot in foul territory all he'd have to do would be to drop the glove. Just about everybody does it. They're making a stink about it over in the National League though particularly with Keith Hernandez inside. You did it, didn't you, Bill? I think everybody did. Mm -hmm. Nobody called it. And I don't think they'll call it over there either. Count is one and one to Winfield. There's the breaking ball. Clemens will have one play to first base. In time. I'll tell you, just about every time he throws to first base, it's an adventure. 
three, four times. He's almost thrown the ball away on pickoff attempts. And right here wasn't exactly a picture perfect throw. Well, he's got plenty of time. And here again, he's only 23. He'll learn that he's got, he, first of all, he'll get the glove uh, ball with the glove instead of the bare hand. And then he'll uh, turn and take his time and throw out Winfield in another couple of years rather than get it barehanded and uh, throw it high. I think that's the one thing you learn as you play the game uh, longer and longer that you've got a lot of time to make routine plays. Patience. Learn from experience. Ken Griffey walked and moved to second when Clemens balked him over. Ball one, so Mattingly, the second Yankee runner to get into scoring position. There's one out here in the top of the fourth. We're scoreless. That'll be foul. One and one now to Ken Griffey. It's a warm day in Boston. The Red Sox used to have a right-hander by the name of Ray Culp. I think they got him from the Cubs. Culp went, started with the Phillies and their organization, I think went to the Cubs and came here. And Clemens reminds me just a little bit of Ray Culp. His motion or his Yeah, stuff? motion and his stuff. Oh, he's a bit taller than Culp. Outside. The heat is not quite there, as you said, Bill, uh, in this particular inning. Well, that was a changeup. He yeah. tried to take a little bit off uh, to Griffey, which might be a mistake for him as we look at McNamara, the manager of the Red Sox, because he he didn't have good motion on that change. Count is two and one to Griffey. This is through in the right field. Dwight Evans will not make a play and Mattingly will cross and the Yankees lead it one to nothing. The problem when you have only one pitch and uh, Clemens we mentioned has that good uh, number one the good fastball is when you lose a couple miles off that pitch and the second or third time around the hitters are on you and you're in trouble. Now here's a fastball that's down low that Griffey turns over and hits it past the second baseman Barrett. Mattingly scores easily, and uh, the right fielder, Evans, decides to hold on to the baseball to keep Griffey at first base. So the Yankees have scored first, one nothing, as we play the top of the fourth. Still one man out, and Don Baylor, who struck out swinging on a good Clements fastball in the second inning, steps in. And we'll see here just how much uh, might be off Clements fastball. Baylor kept fouling the balls off to the right side, way down the right side. And normally he pulls everything. That's fouled away. Roger Clemens has struck out three. And he did it with that fastball over the first three innings in which the Yankees were able to get but one base hit. That came with two outs in the third. Griffey away from first. And this one fouled off a bit to the right again. And the count is now 0-2 on Baylor. A single by Mattingly. He went to second on Winfield's little ground ball to pitcher Clemens. And Mattingly scoring on Ken Griffey's single. Griffey's 46th RBI of the year for a 1-0 New York lead. Keeping Griffey close. Griffey's stolen six bases. He's also been thrown out six times. There goes Griffey. And Baylor fouls it straight back. So on the 0-2, Griffey goes, and he'll have to walk back. Side 
corner strike three Baylor doesn't think so and has some words with Ken Kaiser Kaiser saying now look here Don you and I both know we didn't see it we heard it <laughs> and I heard it for strike <laughs> Now let's watch it again from uh, out here. Yeah, that's a good pitch on the inside part of the plate. <laughs> Baylor turned and they really didn't see the ball past it. Ball tailed back in a bit, but over the plate. So there are two men out, and Willie Randolph, who bounced the second in his first at bat. There goes Greffy. And he'll be in with a stolen base pick. A good pitch to steal on. Once again, Clemens kicks that left leg up a long time and. Uh, Griffey got a good head start towards second base. Griffey's running all his time. The throw was high, too. That didn't hurt him. Here he is again, sliding. Throw high. Gutierrez got the ball down a little late. So Griffey in scoring position, and the count is 0-1 oh on Willie Randolph. Outside, one and one. Well, he's gotten the batting average up to 292, and he has done it by hitting at a 333 pace over his last 23 games. Outside. Two and one. Seeing more of the curve and the slider from Roger Clemens here in the fourth inning. And the Yankees taking advantage to score the game's first run. Griffey leading away from second with two men out. Gutierrez at short. Side retired. Yankees come up with a run. Griffey's RBI single on two base hits. They leave one and through three and a half innings. At Fenway, it's the Yankees. Won the Red Sox, nothing. The fourth inning, back to the top of the Red Sox order at Dwight Evans. Evans, who has the only base hit of the ball game for the Red Sox, an infield single that Paulie Rulo knocked down and could not control. And there's a strike. The Red Sox have sent the minimum amount of men to the plate against Ron Guidry, nine, because following the single, Wade Boggs bounced into a double play. Kansas City still leading Toronto, one nothing. Well, I'm sorry, Go ahead, Bill. Well, Evans goes back and gets another bat. Evidently, he took a broken bat up there. We'd like to remind all fans planning on attending the Yankee Red Sox game on Saturday, August 17th, that the start time has been changed from 8 p.m. to a 2 o'clock day game. That's the Yankees and the Red Sox Saturday afternoon, August 17th at 2 o'clock, not at 8 p.m. as originally scheduled. Think that kid's happy? Dwight Evans just gave him that crack bat. Mm -hmm. no, I'll tell you, that'll... You're not going to sleep tonight. He's going. He's a young catcher too. He's got his cap on backwards. <laughs> Count is on one to Evans. And Griffey comes on to make the play. Line drive to left field, and Griffey played it well for the first out. Ball stayed up a long time. Here's a pitch again. I think Evans got it out on the end of the bat and didn't really drive it. Griffey coming on. So there's one man away, and Wade Boggs steps in. He is hitting now at 352. Bounced into a double play, hit a ground ball to Randolph. Evans stopped in between first and second. Randolph threw to Mattingly for the out, and then they caught Evans in a rundown. Four to three to six on the DP. Gidry has struck out two. He has not walked the batter. Two balls and no. 
no strikes now to Wade Boggs. Got the outside corner. Two and one. has himself a base hit. Fitting is a science. He's got a PhD. Well, he's got a good stroke along with the guy standing beside him there at first base, Don Mattingly. Let's watch Boggs now. He'll hit everything that way. Waits on the ball well, lets the ball get well in, uh, toward the plate. The difference, though, is Mattingly will hit some home runs and drive in some runs for you. Interesting, we mentioned it Friday night on Thursday when the Red Sox were in Chicago. They had a home run hitting contest before the game, and Boggs won it. He hit four. Carlton Fiston did any. He beat people uh, like his teammates, Tony Armas and Jim Rice. And here's Bill Buckner. This could be two. Randall meets a one double play for the New York Yankees. The side retired. Yankees second DP of the afternoon. No runs a hit. The Red Sox do not leave anyone. And through four, it's still the Yankees one. Boston nothing. Schweiniger leads it off for the Yankees. We play the fifth inning. Yankees a run on three hits. Red Sox no runs on two hits. Well, that double play. Boston now has uh, still sent the minimum batters to the plate through four innings. Twelve. Two DPs. Weiniger took a call third strike and a one and two pitch from Roger Clemens. Let's see how his fastball is working here. And that's a high ball one. The velocity not anywhere near what it was over the first two innings. First three, really. Ball two, and he, he still hasn't messed with the curveball much, Bill. Well, he knows, and I think Sullivan also, the catcher, realizes he's not getting that curveball over. The first one he threw was in the dirt, way in the dirt, and the others have been high. So you try to stay away from that if you can. That's three and oh. But we can see, I think, from up here, and I think the fans can tell. The screen that fastball is just simply not popping in there anymore well, that's, and it's also not cold here in Boston it's quite warm yep. today that'll take a little bit out of it and we get a conversation on the mound now Sullivan here's uh John McNamara he has had some arm problems in the past they don't look like they're looking at a blister so uh, maybe Clemens might be just a little bit tired Tim Lawler gets up and starts heating up in the Red Sox bullpen. He might be a little bit tired or fatigued or maybe the heat's just to hit him a little bit here. As we mentioned, uh, after pitching on May 27, he suffered a sore shoulder. He missed three turns, came back on June the 11th, pitched again in the 16th, then missed two more weeks. Came back on July 2nd, pitched four innings against Milwaukee. And then did not appear in a ball game again until August 3rd. Shoulder problems. McNamara's had some problems this year. Has not all the members of his band. <laughs> He's missing the big popper out in center field most of uh -huh. the year. He has missed him. Tony Armas. Count us 3 0 to Weiniger. Strike one. Red Sox fans uh, going through a wave. It's those cheers that you'll hear. They'll come right below us in a moment. Died out. Three and one, right field. Dwight Evans, long run, and he has it. Good defensive play by the veteran right fielder. again a fastball Weiniger who struck out last time pulls this pitch which sometimes tells you something and uh, making a fine sliding catch the right fielder Dwight Evans tells you that the fastball isn't as fast as the fastball was earlier in the ball game right here's Paul Rulo. he struck out swinging his first at bat ball one 
a better could get, could get through this with other pitches. Changing speeds, uh, pitch placement. Uh, we mentioned Clemens just uh, 23 years old and only a couple of years out of the University of Texas. And there is a difference. This has popped up and it'll go over the roof here at Fenway Park. So the count is one and one. Away one and two. The Yankees with a run in the fourth inning and a single by Mattingly moved to second in a ground ball and scored on Griffey's single. Billy Martin facing back and forth in the Yankee dugout. Slupinella on the step. Marty Barrett. And there are two men away. realizing how much time he had elected not to try and grab it on the short hop and made the good play. Two men away and Bobby Meacham will step in. Meacham bounced to Barrett in his first at bat. Still 1-0 Kansas City over Toronto in the second. Cleveland 2-1 over Detroit in the fifth. Ball one. Chicago leading Milwaukee three nothing in the second. And California two nothing over Minnesota in the second inning. There's a strike. One and one. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes to meet you. With two men out here in the top of the fifth inning. One nothing New York. Right to Marty Barrett at second base. And Roger Clements has a one, two, three inning. Nothing across for the Yankees in the top of the fifth through four and a half. It's one nothing New York. We now pause for station identification. Jim Rice leads it off here in the fifth. He popped to Randolph in his first at bat. Ron Guidry has faced the minimum of 12 batters through the first four innings, giving up two hits but a couple of double plays. 2 0. He made uh, Rice reach and pop up in the second inning. There's a strike, 2 and 1. Jim looks like he's looking for everything inside. He's opening up uh, quickly. He's backed up a little bit, uh, seems to me, toward the catcher this year. Get a better look at the ball. Three and one. And he's concerned about his eyesight. As I mentioned earlier in this series, in, uh, the Hall of Fame game up in Cooperstown, he put on prescri prescription glasses. And he's thinking about using him in a ball game, in a regular ball game. Three and one. And it's fouled away. Pitch like that, he should be on a lot better. A couple of years ago, even last year, would have eaten up that pitch. A little slider hanging out over the plate like that. He would not have fouled it off, especially off to the right. That's a good point. Full count pitch coming to Jim Rice. I think what happens as you get older, perhaps uh, you back up a little bit to try to get a better look at the ball, but then you've got to adjust to that. Uh -huh. uh, he's allowing it, he's backed up to get a better look and a longer look, but now he's letting the ball get uh, past him. And he's not being aggressive. The eyes, I don't know about. Uh, only he knows only that. He knows. <laughs> His ophthalmologist. 
Three and two. And this is Wack to left field. Griffey plays it nicely off the wall. And he'll hold Jim Rice to a long single down the left field line, leading off the fifth inning for the Red Sox. Well, that's a Jim Rice we're used to seeing. Here it is again, ball breaking in. He got the head of the bat out and ripped it to left field. And Griffey makes a fine play here. He's doing to Rice what Rice has done to a lot of others. So Rice is on with a leadoff single. And the center fielder Tony Armas will step in. He struck out in a one and two pitch back in the second inning. Gidry struck out two. Now giving up three hits. Yankees lead one nothing. Gidry's been helped by two double plays. Strike one. Armas led the American League last year in RBIs and home runs. But he also bounces into a lot of twin killings. Hits the ball sharply on the ground. Or skies it on that screen and left. Strike. Fastball 0 2. Armas missed those 46 games with a torn left calf muscle. He'd had 14 home runs and 46 RBIs before that injury. So he was off to a pretty good start. on two. Gidry tried to sneak a fastball up and away on Armas. Now he might come back with that slider. He struck him out with a good slider in the second inning. Get a guy looking up, then you get him up and drop that slider down in on him and you can get him to swing over or even uh, ground into a double play. <laughs> Look at Armas. He the fastball outside. Yep. Went for a bad pitch. And Armas has struck out twice. And there's one man away. Well, that's where he put his bat before. Now, here it is, way outside and low. Armas doesn't go get it, just tries to use his arms to go get it, and he swung through it. So, one away and Mike Eastler. He flied to left in his first at bat. Did it with uh, some strength because uh, he really didn't get a good swing at that ball, Bill. No. Randolph and Meacham just talked to Gidry. I wonder if Gidry added a new pitch with Weininger. Meacham must have seen a, a sign that he didn't uh, understand. He talked to Gidry and then Randolph came over and talked to him. The second baseman and the shortstop like to know what's being thrown. Allows him to cheat one way or the other or decide who will cover second base. Rice is on at first with one out. Strike one. Yankees have a one nothing lead here in the bottom of the fifth. Black to center field. That'll be a base hit. Henderson has trouble with it. But Rice is holding it second, so the Red Sox have the runners at first and second with only one man out here in the fifth inning. And Marty Barrett will be stepping in. This ball is just looped in the center field. Eastler didn't get it all. Henderson will bobble it, but Rice had already stopped at second base, and he had to stay there. And there is Rice, the first Red Sox player to reach second base today. And Marty Barrett, who flied to center. Back in the third inning, steps in. Yankees with a 1 0 lead, but the Red Sox with the go ahead run on base. Tying run down at second. That's Jim Rice, who you see in the corner of your screen. Strike one. Rice 
down from second. Eastler leads away from first. And Barrett steps out. Got to add him to that list of players who the Winfields, the Mayberries, the Hargroves. The Mike Hargrove School of uh, take, <laughs> taking a great deal of time. Yeah. The Hendersons. Count is 0-1 to Barrett. Red Sox threatening here in the bottom of the fifth. The Yankees with a 1-0 lead. Down low, 1-1. One one. Well, Cleveland's up its lead over Detroit now to 4-1 to one in the sixth inning. Kansas City still leading Toronto 1-0 in the third. Billy Martin looking on. You say uh, that punctured lung of Billy Martin, as he was examined yesterday, 95% healed. Not in time. Rice got back in time as Paglia Rulo stabbed the line drive for the second out. And this is a slider that stays up. Barrett very seldom pulls the ball, pulls this one right to Pally Rulo. He'll go to Randolph, but Rice will sneak back in at second base. a little concerned about his safety there. Yeah. Didn't want to get hit in the head. Randolph didn't want the ball to go out in the right field either. Two men away, Jackie Gutierrez, who bounced to Paulie Rulo in his first at bat. Yankees with a 1-0 lead. Red Sox threatening here in the bottom of the fifth. Strike one. Got the outside corner. One well, of the Barretts and the Gutierrez, they, they scare you a little bit against Gidry. Hmm. Loop the ball in here or there. They don't take the big swing. Wait on the ball and try to make contact. A lot of guys are committing themselves a little bit too quickly on Gidry Slider, especially. There's a fastball down low. Afternoon started out with the bright sunny skies and has become overcast here. Cloud filled sky. But still just as warm. Runners at first and second. Rice at second. Eastler at first with two outs. And the count one at two. And Gutierrez hits it to center field. Henderson makes the play to retire the side. So Ricky Henderson goes way back to end the inning for the Boston Red Sox. Threat by the boards. No runs, two hits. Red Sox leave two through five. One nothing New York. Clouds have uh, completely taken over the area here in Boston as you get a good look at Fenway Park with the Green Monster to your left. Some bleachers out in center and right center field with two men out in the fifth inning. Gutierrez up. Hits this one, goes down for the pitch, and Henderson starts in and then has to retreat quickly. And grabs it up over his shoulder and then stumbles down, but that's the third eye. See that piece of paper that came out? Some of the fans reacted afterwards. They thought that was the ball, and they thought it had gotten away from Ricky Henderson. But Henderson held on to it, and the side retired. So through five, the Yankees with a one to nothing lead. Yankee run coming in the fourth inning. Mattingly let off with a single, went to second when Winfield bounced to Clemens and then scored on Ken Griffey's single to right field. Clemens is out of the mound. McNamara is now going to come out and talk to him. We've talked about Clemens' shoulder problems, but you wonder why this wasn't discussed while in the bullpen. We may get a pitching change here. Lawler, the left-hander, and the right-hander out of the bullpen for the Red Sox, I believe is more clear, and that is going to be it. 
So Clemens will leave after pitching five innings of four hit ball. He struck out three and he walked one. And while the that'll be Crawford coming in. So Steve Crawford will make the uh, run in from the bullpen. And he'll get uh, as much time as he needs to get ready for Clemens. In his five innings, he walked one, struck out three, gave up the four hits. We commented on that fact that he started off with a great deal of heat, tremendous velocity on his fastball. In the second inning, he struck out Baylor and Weiniger, and then got Pauli Rulo to lead off the third inning, so he had struck out three or four batters. But then the velocity left him. And the Yankees got that run in the fourth. So while Crawford takes his warm-up tosses with the Yankees leading at one to nothing as we start the sixth inning, let's take time out for this word. Controlled swings. Here's Don Mattingly. Fly to left. Open the fourth inning with a single to center and then scored on Ken Griffey's single. There's a strike. Mattingly began the day fourth in the American League at 326. Inside corner, good fastball on two. Crawford's come out, and he's throwing strikes. And all these hitters better start swinging. Mr. Kaiser's getting wet behind the plate. He's got, look at that shirt. He's, he's soaking. He better leave the dugout swinging. Both teams. That's fouled away. Still on two. A pitcher's duel here at Fenway Point. That's Look at there. He's soaking wet. Working hard. Players get to go in and sit down and get a little water or whatever they want to drink. And the umpires have to be out there for all nine. I think the fans tend to forget that. I tend to forget it sometimes. You don't realize it. it's a tough job out there. Yeah. Up high. One and two. Making it a little bit uncomfortable for Matting. Two and two. Steve Crawford on a relief of Roger Clemens here in the sixth inning. Just got a report from the Red Sox and their team doctor, Dr. Pappas, said that uh, Clemens left mainly because of fatigue. No pain factor at all. Just simply got tired. That's what he was saying through those first three innings. He did not look like he was facing himself. Mattingly hits this one to left field. Rice will watch it off the wall. And he'll hold Mattingly to a single. Oh, he knows exactly yeah. what that ball is going to do, doesn't he? He just stood there with his hands in his hip yeah. and waited. That's the third time in the last two uh, days that Mattingly has hit one off that uh, fence over Rice's head. Here it is again, the fastball tailing away, Mattingly up under it, and uppercuts it toward left. Look at Rice. Yeah. Now, you'll turn around, and the ball comes right back to him. He even grabs it barehanded. Makes it look easy. You try it sometime, though. You go out there, you spend hours, and you work on that if you're going to play that position here at Fenway Park. By the way, that's Mattingly's sixth base hit in this uh, series. 6 4 11. Here's Winfield. Ball, strike one. Just telling him just to get back in and hit. What's well, always the, the, the by play between the hitter and the umpire is always it, it's amusing. It wasn't amusing when they called a bad one on you, was it? Well, yeah, but the by play was oh. some of the words. <laughs> <laughs> Two 
That's outside. Winfield's 0 for 2. He hit back to Clemens both times, but the second time he did it, it helped develop a run for the Yankees. He hit it slowly. And Mattingly, who had singled, was able to advance to second. You're always trying to make the umpire see things your way. Uh -huh. If you can't hit the inside pitch, everything inside, you yell and scream about it. This one is up the power alley in right field. Mattingly is running. Mattingly will score, and Winfield will dig it toward third base and be in with a stand-up triple, and the Yankees lead it two to nothing. Well, the Yankees won two. Mattingly and Winfield coming through here in the sixth inning. Mattingly a single. Off the wall, and Winfield rips this one in the right center field. A breaking ball looked like it might have been a slider. The Yankees were lucky here. Instead of bouncing into that bullpen area, it kicked off the wall, stayed in play. Mattingly scored easily, and Winfield went on to third base. Had the ball bounce into that bullpen area, the Yankees would have runners at second and third, and uh, one out. But they've got to run in, they've got to run at third, and lead to another. And handshakes and high fives for Don Mattingly. Who scores Winfield's fourth triple of the year. And his fourth run batted in in the series. The Bo Sox have to bring their infield in. Ken Griffey, who was singled on the first run, takes ball one. There's only one man out. We're in the sixth. The Yankees now with a two to nothing lead. It's Boggs at third, Gutierrez at short. And Winfield leading from third. And it's fouled away. One ball, one strike. Griffey walked in the second, went to second when Clemens balked. After his RBI single in the fourth, he stole second, but was left stranded with one man out. One out here, one run in, and a 2 nothing Yankee lead. Short left field, long run for Rice. He will not get it. It gets by him. And Griffey will go into second as Winfield scores easily. If Rice catches that ball, Winfield, no chance to tag up. But Rice couldn't get to it, and it skittered by. He had a long run for that ball, and he tried to play it safe and block it. Could not. Let's watch it again. Griffey gets under the ball, in on the bat. Here's Rice digging for the ball. Up here, we could see that he could not get to it, but here hits, and a lot of English skips by Rice, and had uh, Griffey been really running, he could have been at third base. He starts up again, ends up at second. So Griffey's second RBI, two runs in, Yankees lead 3-0. And Don Baylor pops this one up. Bill Buckner makes the play in foul territory for the second out. Griffey stays at second. Jim Lawler up and throwing again in the Red Sox bullpen. And Willie Randolph, who's bounced out twice, is the batter. I think it's going to rain. Well, uh, uh, someone behind us, the groundskeeper said that it's supposed to rain today they expect it of course it's an official ball game right field long run for Dwight Evans but he will catch up to it and the side is retired but the Yankees come up with two runs on three hits off Steve Crawford they leave one through five and a half it's now three nothing New York at six uh, Cubs two in the six Phillies over the Cardinals four to one in the eighth and Montreal in the sixth inning it's Pittsburgh five Montreal three now, American League scores Cubs four or the American League scores White Sox four Milwaukee nothing in the fourth in the fifth inning California leading Minnesota four nothing 
Cleveland four, Detroit one in the sixth, and uh, Kansas City still leading Toronto one to nothing in the third. Tonight, uh, Baltimore will be at Texas, and the other score we don't have, Oakland playing at Seattle. That's a game out on the West Coast. Spencer? Just thinking of that Chicago series, Bill. Uh, Tom Seaver pitched Thursday or Friday night. Yankees uh, may see Seaver. Yep. That series in Chicago. We'll have all three games for you here on WPIX 11 Alive, the Yankee Television Network. Ron Guidry pitching to Mark Sullivan to lead it off in the sixth, strike one. Sullivan struck out swinging in the third inning. Guidry has struck out two. Has not walked about it. The amazing thing is that the youngster, the 23-year-old right-hander, is tired. And <laughs> here's Kid is still throwing fastball because he's milk mixed his pitches up and he's paced himself. Foul straight back, and the count is 0-2. This were tennis, you'd say advantage Gidry. Well, Gidry will be 35 on the 28th of this month. By the way, Bill Mambo Kett. That's right, birthday time. He's uh, 49 today, the Yankees' new pitching coach. Oh, and two to Sullivan, and he fouls it. Now the big crowd on hand. Had over 33,000 in each of the first two games of this series, so they may go over 100,000 for the three. Oops, Sullivan wanted to go and uh, change bats, and Kaiser wants to make sure it's broken. Now that's something I don't I don't understand. Uh, he's going to use Evans' bat. He'll probably hit a home run. Remember the last <laughs> time a bat was exchanged at home plate here, Bucky did at a home run with Mickey Rivers' that's bat right. back in 1978. I think part of the reason, uh, and this is just speculation on my part, to speed the game up. Yeah, but the game is being played three yes. or four hours anyway. That's right. <laughs> and a lot of other things slow it down. That's ball two, two and two to Mark Sullivan. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Yankees three, Red Sox nothing. Foul away. I passed the bookstore yesterday, Bill. They had a book in the window. Yankees and the Red Sox. Baseball's greatest rivalry. And I started thinking about it. And I guess it really is. I guess when the Dodgers and the Giants both played in New York City, maybe that was at one point. But right now, with the Dodgers 500 miles away from, from the Giants, and the Giants but not really that great a club, it's more memory. This well, club. you got different fans, too, yeah. out there on the West Coast. They not as rabid uh, as the fans uh, I don't think in New York this is indeed some great rivalry never forgiven New York for taking Babe Ruth <laughs> okay, that the giant Dodger rivalry and when both teams were in New York was some kind of rivalry oh, that was the that was the tops ball four as Sullivan Works Guidry for a base on balls after Guidry was ahead of him at 0 2. First walk issued by Ron Guidry. That was part of that. I guess the final year both teams were in New York in 1956 with the Giants. You could feel it. I mean, you, you mean it. it touched me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could feel it, the intensity. Yep. Fights uh, on the field, in the stands. One year, Carl Ferrillo went into the dug up, dug out, and beat up on Leo DeRocher. I think he broke his hand, was yep. out the rest of the season. He wound up winning the batting title. Yep, I think he hit 323 that year and won it. Dwight Evans. Infield single in the first, fly to left. Ebbets Field was a park. You, you, you're right next to the fans. It's 340 to left field, much like this park, but they just had a little eight-foot wall. 297 to right, which you liked, with that 
Rich high scoreboard. Screen. High screen. Usual like. Yeah, usual. Love. <laughs> 393 to center. That's fouled straight back. Snyder like. Yeah. Left handed hitter sitting uh, among all those big, strong right handed hitters. Let's see, guy like Campanella, Reese, Hodges, Robinson, Perella, Robinson. Yeah, being a lefty in that club is. Oh, yeah. Big. And he was the only one. Yeah. Snyder. Foul back again. And the count is one and two. Jim Gilliam uh, switch it. Move Jackie Robinson over to third. Exciting time for three teams in New York. Count to Evans, one and two. Yankees lead three nothing here in the bottom of the sixth. Side two and two. Nobody getting loose in the Yankee bullpen. Yankees leading it uh, by three. It's three zip. I think if someone gets on, though, Martin will get somebody up. I haven't seen Fisher up throwing lately. Well, he pitched uh, both games of that doubleheader against Cleveland on Thursday night, nearly five innings. There's Sullivan away from first. And the count will hold two and two. Guidry had a tough inning in the fifth. Rice singled after Armas struck out. Eastler singled the center. First and second with one out. Barrett had a hard line drive that Pauli Rulo caught. And Gutierrez hit deep to center. So perhaps an indication that uh, Guidry may be tiring just a little bit. Now Sullivan walks to lead off. Two and two, the count to Evans. Right center field, long run, way back, Winfield could not get it. Sullivan will hold it third, and Dwight Evans is in with a stand-up double. Ball's really taking off in the outfield. Winfield looked like he thought he had a shot at that, then hurried. He had to change speed to try to get to the ball, hit at the base of the wall in deep right center, just in front of the Red Sox bullpen. Let's watch again. Looked like it was a routine fly ball when it left the bat. Here's Henderson digging. Winfield coming from the other side. Just out of reach. The ball hits the base of the wall. Winfield can't find it, but Henderson can. And Sullivan goes on to third base, and we will get some action now in the Yankee bullpen, and it is... Fisher. Brian Fisher loosening up. The Red Sox threatening here in the sixth, and Wade Boggs is at the plate. Strike one. Sullivan walked to lead off the inning after Guidry had him 0 2, and Evans goes to the opposite field, the power alley, in right center for a double. Strike two. Boggs bounced into a double play and singled the left. Fouled straight back. Somebody was saying yesterday, I forget who it was, but somebody in the clubhouse that. If they allowed you to put 20 men in the field, he thought Wade Boggs would still find a way <laughs> to get a base hit. <laughs> oh, and two to Boggs. Second and third, nobody out for the Sox. Bottom of the sixth, three nothing New York. Ball one. McNamara looking on. Had a good game from a starting pitcher who tired. And then Crawford came out in the sixth inning and gave up two runs. Two and 
two. You got to make him uncomfortable. Box sitting in there and just watching and watching, and he had to back away from that. First time we've seen Gidry come inside on anybody this year, and that really wasn't that close. But you've got to pitch a little bit inside if you want to pitch away. Left field. Griffey is over. Could not get the ball. Let's it's see. a foul ball, foul. though. It's a foul ball. It's foul. Third base umpire. And he called. He said a fan touched the ball. And they might call. Uh, they might call the batter out. Well, we were completely screened out, just like you were at Hall. They called fan interference, and I believe Boggs. Uh, Boggs might be out. John McNamara coming in. Larry Barnett made the call. Evidently, Griffey. And we could not see it from here. It was under the ball waiting for it. And a fan reached out, touched the ball. Barnett, uh, using one of his prerequisites, said, hey, Griffey would have caught the ball. You're out, Boggs, and we'll send the runners back. And McNamara does not want to hear that, but he's got to, and it'll be an out. Let's watch it again. Here's Griffey going into the corner. sweater grabbed the ball or tried to get it and it was off his glove Meacham runs it down but Boggs is out because of fan interference you know normally you see that the other way yeah. with a ground ball in Yankee Stadium a fan it's base hit fan will touch it and the umpire will say well you get a single or a double but here you're allowed to call the runner up and it costs the Red Sox a run if Ken Griffey catches that ball in the position he's in there's a good chance Mark Sullivan might have been able to score from third base. Instead, there's one out and Bill Buckner. Foul ball. So instead of it being a three to one ball game with one out, it is still three zero. And Griffey will get the put out. He was closest to the play. Give the fan an assist. <laughs> he was closer. <laughs> Buckner's 0 for 2. He popped a short and bounced into a double play. Gidry's been helped today by a pair of DPs. One in the first, another one in the fourth. Foul straight back. Still 0 and 2. Buckner came over from the Cubs last season. Good deal for the Red Sox. He's a good ball player. Well, he not only helped him with the bat, uh, but he also helped him at first base. Dig a lot of bad throws out of the dirt. Hey, Gutierrez, better shortstop. Didn't he? And Boggs at third. Oh, and two. Just outside, one and two. Buckner's got a good eye. He's only struck out 23 times this year at 442 at bats. So he'll make contact. Three nothing Yankees. Bottom of the six. Second and third. One man out for Boston. This will score a run. Randolph will go on to first for the second out. As Sullivan scores and the Red Sox are on the board at three to one. Buckner gets his 69th RBI of the season and Evans moves over to third. And here is Jim Rice. Pop to second. Singled off the wall. In the fifth inning, and Griffey played it nicely and held him to a one base hit. Ball one. A walk to Sullivan, a double by Evans. And Buckner's ground ball scores with a run. Two. Gidry 
takes that walk behind the mound, says a couple of things to himself, and goes back to work. Two and one. Still one nothing Kansas City over Toronto on the third, but they've had that score up there a long time. Ball three, three and one to Jim Rice. Only Ron Guidry could tell you if he's tiring a bit, but he gave up those two hits in the fifth. His first walk here and the double. And it's now three and two. Billy Martin concerned about that also. Gene Michael to the right of your screen. Here's the full count pitch to Jim Rice. Center field. And Ricky Henderson is there. The side is retired. The Red Sox come up with a run on one base hit. They leave one. And on the dog scoreboard, after six innings, it's the Yankees three, Boston one. We pause now for station identification. From the Boston Red Sox, but three more innings to go in a hitter's ballpark. Bill? All right, Spencer. Weininger struck out a fly to right field in the game. He's 0 for 2. And a the ball. They put the lights on here, Bill. It has gotten overcast and uh, getting dark. Well, normally they try to do that at the beginning of an inning. Two balls, no strikes on Weininger. Butch now three for nine in the series. He struck out in the second inning, fly to right field. A fine catch by the right fielder, Dwight Evans, in the fifth. Two balls and a strike on Weininger. Yankees with a run in the fourth. Ken Griffey drove it in. They picked up two more in the sixth. A triple by Winfield driving in Mattingly. And a looping double to left by Griffey driving in Winfield. They're changing the scoreboard now. I think Kansas City's going to come up with some more runs. This is the old-fashioned scoreboard. They're going to take the numbers out. They have come up with another one. They lead Toronto now two to nothing. Danny Jackson against Bill Musselman for the Jays. A bit high to Weiniger, three and one. Yankees, as of now, seven games behind Toronto in the American League East. The last two days have picked up two games. And Weininger walks on a 3-1 pitch. Crawford in relief of Clemens. Here's Pally Rulo. He has struck out and bounced out. 0 for 2, 1 for 7 in the series. 10 home runs for Pags and 37 runs batted in. No chance for Boggs off third base. Yankees trying to pick up another run. They lead three to one here in the seventh. The lucky fan, recipient of a baseball from Wade Boggs. Over near the Yankee dugout. A lot of fans without their shirts on, hoping to get some sun. They did earlier. Now all clouds. Rulo tried to squeeze in a run yesterday and popped into a double play. Pitch shot, but Weiniger not going. I think the last two guys you try the hit and run with would be Pally Rulo and Weiniger. Well, the sun not out. Takes away a little bit of an advantage from a pitcher, Bill, uh, with the shadows that would normally come out in between home plate and the pitcher's mouth as the day progresses. Well, maybe Crawford thinks that Weininger might try to steal. I wonder what scouting report he got. <laughs> That's low and away. 
looked at the wrong uh, W. Uh, Winfield, maybe. No. Weiniger has no stolen bases and no attempts uh, this year. And checking out Weiniger over his career, he has a total of two. Now he's not a threat. He'll be the first one to tell you that, too. <laughs> stole one in 83 and stole one last year. Three and one on facts. Steve Crawford ran into trouble last inning. His first gave up two runs on three hits and working himself in trouble here in the seventh. Like big Bob Stanley gets up and starts heating up in the Red Sox bullpen. Three and two on Palirulo. There is Bob Stanley in the bullpen. He was very ineffective on Friday night. Full count on Mike Palirulo with the runner at first and nobody out. The Yankees leading three to one in the seventh inning. will not go and Pagliarulo pops it up. Gutierrez the shortstop struggling out there he gives way to Tony Armas the center fielder for the first out. Want to let that man coming in make the play. And finally Armas just called Gutierrez off. So we watch it again Gutierrez keeps going keeps going pats his glove and then here's Armas behind him. And gets out of the way for the first out. But don't va Tony. <laughs> Here's Bobby Meacham. Meacham bounced a second twice in the ball game. He's 0 for 2. And he takes a strike. three for nine in the series against the Red Sox. Red Sox may not be expecting it but uh, I don't know perhaps Meacham might lay one down here Bill. Well he takes wide again it's one and one. Got Henderson on deck. Second out. Back at first base is Butch Weininger. And now we'll get Ricky Henderson. Henderson still at 348 with a one for three day so far. Bounced to shortstop in the first single to left field. In the third. Off the wall, fine play by Jim Rice, then struck out in the sixth. Third leading hitter in the American League coming in behind George Brett and Wade Boggs. Ball on. Well, the Blue Jays have tied it. Mm -hmm. And the fifth inning, Toronto and Kansas City are tied at two and two. play right side here are the Yankees lead three to one in the seventh Weiniger at first base and they're two outs Once again, Henderson. 
just loses his bat. That's the second time he's done that in this game. Two and two. Let's watch it again. It's a top hand. Yeah. Again, that top hand. Yeah. Uh, that is a young lady. Worries about the bat coming in both ways. And the ball coming back down. It's a beach ball. Won't let you play Pepper anymore anywhere. Be a highlight of the game to watch guys watch a guy get a bat and about five guys line up in front of him, throw the ball to him, and hit the ball to each one. Good for batting practice for your eye and good for fielding practice for the, the guys with the glove. But it also messed up some grass around home plate, so they said you can't do it anymore. Still two and two on Anderson. The derivation, I wonder. Happy, happy little workout, whatever. You know. <laughs> the players don't even play flip anymore. They used to pitchers used to flip a ball around the circle. They, of course, a lot of them got stepped on and got spiked. And I think a lot of clubs discouraged even flip. Merrick will back up at second. And he throws out Henderson. No runs, no hits. A man left on base, but played six and a half here in Boston. And the Yankees lead the Red Sox three to one. But Boston has gotten three of its five base hits over the last two innings. Joe Cowley with a headset on. Joe coming up with another victory yesterday. He's now 10 and 5. That's Marty Beistrom who was right. Cowley was 9 and 2 last year. So you put those two together, that's 19 and 7 over the last two years. It's a pretty darn good record. The Yankees with a 3-1 lead here. Tony Armas, who's had trouble with Ron Guidry this afternoon, will step in to lead it off. Bill? All right, Spencer. Armas has struck out twice. Ball one. Armas at two... 38. 16 home runs, 34 runs batted in. We got no reaction from Cowley when you mentioned his name. He's probably listening to Ken Coleman and Joe Castiglione, the uh, broadcasters for the Red Sox. It's one and one on Armas. has an easy play at second one away I used to listen to uh, Ken Coleman when he did football broadcasts for the Cleveland Browns Ken is also an author of a book on broadcasting that's right I've, I've, I've seen that book he was talking yesterday when he was in Cleveland he had a 10 year old when Billy Martin was in Cleveland in 1959 he used to Take his 10 year old to the ballpark. This kid was playing Little League. Billy would work him at second base every day. Mm -hmm. Mike Eastler. He's flied the left single to center. One for two against Gidry. Funny, we listen to the games in Cleveland. We've got this guy with the New England accent talking about uh, Otto Graham or whomever was playing. <laughs> 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 That's a good football team, the Brownies back then. Two strikes on Eastler. Yeah, football season got underway last night for the uh, New York teams right here on WPIX. The Giants beat Denver 30 to 20. Jets didn't fare well though. Joe Walton's ball club uh, beaten by the Philadelphia Eagles 37-17 at the Meadowland. Wish both teams good luck in 85. Got him. Good slider. Eastler caught looking. That's strikeout number four for Gidry. And they're two outs. Well, Ron Gidry 
who will celebrate his 35th birthday later on this month. Still has that good slider. There we watch it again. And it is strike three. And there are two men away. Marty Barrett's fly to center line to third. He's 0 for 2. Red Sox had Gidry on the ropes in the fifth inning. They had runners at first and second with one down. Barrett lined to third and Gutierrez fly to center. This is in the center field. Ricky Henderson. And that'll retire the side. Henderson having fun out center. Three up, three down. We played seven. Yankees three, Boston one. Sorry, kids, but summer cannot last forever. So here's some good news. A great back-to-school giveaway coming up during the upcoming Red Sox series at the stadium. M&M's Chocolate Candies presents Yankee Backpack Day on Monday, August 19th. All fans 14 and under attending the Yankee Red Sox series finale. That's on Monday, the 19th. It's a 1 o'clock afternoon game. We'll take home a free Yankee backpack made of sturdy canvas, compliments of M&M chocolate candies. Good seats on sale for the Red Sox series. You may not want to go back to school, but you got to go back to school, and you'll have yourself a nice backpack. And here's Don Mattingly to lead it off for the Yankees. Eighth inning, 3-1, to one, New York. Mattingly's two for three in the ball game, and he scored two runs. And Crawford's first pitch is a called strike. Mattingly does not like it. I think most of the hitters have expressed some displeasure with the ball strike calls here this afternoon. Nobody's gotten in Kaiser's face. But they make their displeasure known by walking away. It's one and one on Mattingly. Inside, two and one. I don't think too many people want to charge Kenneth <laughs> Kaiser. He's not going to back away either. Oh, by the way, in the left again, this one playable, I believe, unless the wind takes it, and the wind will take it high off the wall. And this time, Mattingly has a double. That's the fourth time he has hit that wall here at Fenway in the last two ball games. The other three base hit singles. And this is 35th double of the season. But as you said, Bill, Bryce thought he had a play on it. And he doesn't make mistakes like that. But the, the wind is blowing out toward left. And at the last moment, he realizes. And under the circumstances, he gets back and makes a pretty darn nice play. But Mattingly is in with a stand-up double. Oh, by the way, you started. Tony LaRusso was suspended a couple of ball games by American League president uh, Bobby Brown. We were talking about bumping uh -huh. umpires. And LaRusso, with that bumping incident, at the Yankee Stadium has to sit out two ball games and he says okay he could be, be, be his own attorney <laughs> Tony is a he won't appeal though no. Winfield one for three an RBI triple in the sixth inning and he takes the ball Yankees leading three to one trying to put another run on the board here late we're in the top of the eighth inning high 2 and 0 on Winfield that hit by Mattingly he should be up right around 330 now and slowly but surely he is coming up on the leaders and again uh, I, I believe if it's in the 340s he's going to have one good shot of winning that batting title again Winfield takes the strike three and one Mattingly's problem is that he has the burden of having to also drive and run. Mm -hmm. That's the problem of a Brett and of a Mattingly. While Boggs, I think he can hit for Boggs. He'll bat him either first or second, and he can be quite selfish in his hitting. So I always worry about a Wade Boggs or look for Boggs to always hit well. Mm -hmm. Two and two on Winfield. Boggs uses left field. Mattingly uses the whole field, and Brett does it all. He yeah. can hit for power. It's a ball hard, left center, right center. Box calls Brett idle. Doesn't call him by his first. Idle. <laughs> That's it. Period. 
Well, Brett has to drive and runs too. Yeah. That's uh, that's could be his problem getting down the stretch when you try to do more than you should be doing. That'll get the runner over. Gutierrez has a tough play, and Mattingly will be waved home. And Winfield will go to second, and the Yankees now lead by a score of four to one. Well, Gutierrez. As you said, uh, Mattingly was going to advance to third, but that chopper, Winfield's been hitting a lot of those recently. And that ball just bounced by Gutierrez, and as we've seen so many times, Winfield just didn't stop running. He has good anticipation. He measures things. Watch Gutierrez kind of nonchalant at it. It got by him. Mattingly is waved on home by Gene Michael and Winfield, the alert base runner that he is. He just never stopped. He realized that he had the shot at going more than first base, and he did. As you see, the ball picked up at center field, and Winfield's in easily, and the Yankees now take a 4-1 to one lead. I think the Red Sox might be a bit unhappy because Gutierrez did not try to get in front of that ball to keep it in the infield. Here's Griffey. I guess they got to rule out a double. It is a double and a run batted in for Winfield. An infield double. Gutierrez plays the ball one hand and he plays it off to the side normally does a good job but on a play like that you've got to make sure that if you don't make it it'll bounce off your body and you can control it then at least a run would not have scored they would have the Yankees might have had runners at first and third with nobody out but now they've got to run in two strikes on Griffey Griffey has single in a run and double in a run and walk so he's two for two. Still leading the Tigers at seven to two. Cleveland over Detroit in the eighth inning. Detroit three games behind the Yankees in third place. Off Crawford, and that's going to be another base hit. As the Red Sox gloves have springs in them here in the eighth inning. Winfield goes to third. And a perfect day for Griffey. Three for three and a walk. This one right back to Crawford. He gets the glove up. But he flinched out of the way a little bit of it. And it bounces off his glove. It'll go as an infield hit. And the Yankees now with runners at first and third. And there is still nobody out. And the Yankees have scored one to take a 4-1 lead. McNamara saying what else can happen to my ball club here this afternoon. He doesn't want to watch that. I don't blame him. Ball played badly at shortstop. Bounced up the middle glancing off the heel of the glove. The Yankees leading by three and threatening to score more. Don Baylor struck out twice and fouled out. Infield in for the Red Sox. And that's the ball. Stanley's up and throwing, and he's now watching the action from the bullpen in right field. Crawford came on in the sixth inning, replacing the starter, Roger Clemens, who, as of now, is a pitch of record. The youngster went the first five, had to leave because of fatigue. Center. And it's a short hop by Evans. Baylor will have a double and a run will score. And the Yankees lead by a score of five to one. Excellent play by Dwight Evans. He didn't come up with the ball, but he saved another run scoring. Came up, said, I have it, but uh, no way, said the second base umpire Rocky Rowe, who had run out there. Evan Short hopped it. Of course, he took a gamble. The ball gets by him. Another run would score. Baylor would have at least a triple. And that is going to be it for Steve Crawford. Bob Stanley will come on. An RBI for Baylor, number 75, as Griffey moves to third. And Winfield scores. And the Yankees have now opened it up here to a 5-1 lead as we play the top half of the eighth inning. So Bob Stanley will come on. Crawford went two innings plus. 
Gave up seven hits, four in a row here in the eighth inning, but uh, in his defense, two of them were questionable. Gutierrez unable to play a, a chopped ground ball, and then uh, the little bouncer to the mound that got by Steve Crawford. So Bob Stanley will come on. Yankees looking for a sweep of this three game series. And while Stanley warms up, let's check through the scoreboard. Toronto with two runs in the fifth inning, now tied with Kansas City at two as they play the seventh. Ron Musselman started for the Jays. Dennis Lamp came out on the fourth. Danny Jackson for the Royals. Steve Farr now on in the seventh. Final, it was Cleveland seven, Detroit two. Neil Heaton beat Randy O'Neill. California with. 10 Minnesota nothing as they play the bottom of the seventh John Candelaria with his first start for the Angels John Butcher started for Minnesota they've had four pitchers out of the ball game they've gone eight now in Chicago and the White Sox lead Milwaukee four to one Joel Davis his first start for the White Sox Dan Spilner has come out in the eighth and Ray Burris in for Milwaukee Oakland at Seattle Bill Kruger against Billy Swift let's watch this play again as Baylor takes the ball to right center field and Dwight Evans hustles over. Yeah, no doubt, Bill. Boy, that's a fine play, yeah. though. He, he really cut that ball off well. That gets by him another run scores. Yep. He smothered that ball well, yep. Then did a little acting, but he couldn't persuade the second base umpire, Rocky Rowe, that he'd caught it. So now here's Randolph. I'll give you the National League scores in just a moment. Now, this is a perfect spot for the squeeze. Runners at second and third. Randolph takes inside. Uh, there are no outs. Well, he's 0 for 3. He's grounded to second to short and also fly to right field. That's on the inside corner, and it's 1 and 1 on Randolph. Griffey at third. Baylor down at second. Bob Stanley pitching to Willie Randolph. Stanley came out Friday night. The Red Sox leading 6-4. Bases were loaded. Let the bases clear. Gave up two more runs. Ineffective performance for him. That'll be out of play. The Yankees have tried to squeeze twice in the series. In game one it worked. With Weiniger. Yesterday it did not with Pally Rulo. National League, the Mets with Ed Lynch beat Chicago 6-2, Montreal 6-5 over Pittsburgh. Phillies beat the Cardinals 4-1, so the Mets have taken over first place by a full game over St. Louis in the National League East. All right, Spencer, the count here, one and two on Randolph. And Baylor's got hung up for some reason. He went on to third base. Now they're going to have Griffey hung up. And Griffey sneaks back in. Now they've got Baylor hung up. <laughs> All he's got to do is run Baylor on and Barrett tags him. I'm not sure Baylor realized that Griffey was at third base. As soon as that ball was hit, he ran up behind Gutierrez. And there's one down. And the uh, Red Sox misplayed this one a bit because they had a shot at Griffey. Watch it here. Ball is played by Gutierrez. And there's Baylor already ahead of Gutierrez. The throw comes back to the plate. Sullivan throws Griffey gets back throw back the second now and Barrett begins running Baylor back to third and he'll tag Baylor out in the meantime Randolph remains at first he didn't want to start running no. everybody would have been <laughs> tagged did you get the scoring on that yeah the shortstop Gutierrez six to the catcher uh Sullivan two to the third baseman Boggs five to the second baseman Barrett four six two five four. Here's Weininger now batting with runners at first and third and one down. And Butch takes the strike. Yankees leading five to one in the eighth inning. Baylor tried to dazzle the Red Sox infielders with footwork didn't work. Either forgot Griffey was over third and thought Griffey might be moving, although the infield was in. Weiniger struck out, robbed of a base hit by Dwight Evans, 
and he's walked. That's out of play. That's Zach Infield now back at double play depth with runners at first and third and Weiniger at the plate. Bob Stanley signed that big million dollar contract and he hasn't been satisfied with his performance. And he's blown eight leads and six ties coming in for the Red Sox this year. And that's not the kind of performance the Red Sox or Bob Stanley won. As I remember Stanley's ball used to sink well. Kept the ball down. That just missed outside. He still says that's his best pitch, but for some reason he's gotten away from it and he's trying to get back to it. Just go buy some Vaseline. That'll get you back to it quickly. <laughs> One and two on Weininger. It's going to be the fastball away. Sinker. And that missed away. It's two and two. Yankees trying to pick up another run here. They lead five to one they've gotten two in the eighth and they have runners at first and third with just one away and the squeeze is on and there have got Griffey one throw they tag it and Randolph goes to second and uh, that's the inning the inning is over Weiniger strikes out as he throws a bat at the ball and they touch up on Griffey Yankees pick up uh, two runs on four hits they leave a man on base and at the end of seven and a half innings of play the Yankees lead Boston five to one. It's the betting advertisers of New York Yankee baseball are your Toyota dealer and the extra value package trucks that can now save you big bucks on added features. But like the light beer with the first name and taste everything else is just the light. Citibank when you bank at Citibank it's your city. Your Tri-State Dodge dealers will invite you to test drive Poetry in Motion, the 1985 Dodge Lancer, and by the New York Yankees. Now you saw a replay of that uh, double play on the attempted squeeze to close out the inning, and we go to the bottom of the eighth. It is 5-1 Yankees, Bill. And the strike is called on Jackie Gutierrez, who's grounded to third, fly to center field. He'll be followed by Rich Gedman, who's on the on-deck circle. Gedman will bat for Mark Sullivan. Two strikes on Gutierrez. Yankees trying for sweep before 33,685 here at Fenway Park. All three crowds have been over 33,000. Those extra folks, uh, they wind up with over 100,000 for the three game series. Waste pitch outside. Checks win by Gutierrez. He started and held up two and two. Guidry has nine complete games this year. He's looking for his 15th win of the year. How about that Andujar with the Cardinals? He's won 18. Joaquin. Winfield, an easy play in right. One out. 20-year-old kid at Jay Stadium, 18 and three. What forgot a marvelous, about him. Yeah. How can I forget about uh, Gooden? What a marvelous athlete! Yesterday's game, I was, I was told he played down a beautiful sacrifice bunt. Another time, they were expecting a bunt. He hit away and hit the ball right to the shortstop spot, with the shortstop going to cover second base. They had a base. And Rich Gedman will hit here for Mike Sullivan. Gedman batting 309, nine home runs, 48 runs batted in. He's been slapping the ball the other way, and that when he checks swing. A check swing by Gedman. And bounced uh, off third. A lot, they would send the left handed batter up to bat against Gidry. We look at Martin and Michael. And hits ball, Pally Rulo bobbles it, he'll have no play. Five. And they 
the bobbles on the easy ones. That's Patty Rulo's eighth error of the season. And it gives a breath of hope to the Red Sox here. Easy ball. And Max just misplayed it. It's rolled up on his glove by the time he picks it up. No chance to make a throw. Well, he's got an awfully big glove. The ball will get lost in there. <laughs> Valley Rulo. Not Evans. Evans working with batting gloves. He single off Valley Ulo's glove. Fly to left field, double to right center. Evans coming out of his slump. He's two for three. And four for 12 against Yankee pitching. Yankees are leading by four. Let's take uh, 10 seconds along the Yankee television network for station identification. Pitching to Evans with a runner at first and one down in the eighth inning. Straight away center. Henderson misjudged the ball and can't get to it. They're going to hold the runner at third base. No doubt about it. Ricky Henderson misplays. That line drive started coming in and going to the left. And then had a turn completely around. And his body kind of in an awkward position as he finally did get back there as we take another look at it. Henderson now turning and in a very tough position to catch this ball as it goes over his glove. And it'll go as a double. I think he ought to play a little deeper because the wind is carrying the ball out to him. So it's now second and third. Only one man away in an inning. By all rights, it should have been older. Valley Rulo bobbling Gedman's ground ball, and while that is ruled a double, it was misjudged by Ricky Henderson. And once again, Brian Fisher will get up and start loosening up in the Yankee bullpen along with Dave Rigetti as Wade Boggs steps in. One for three today, and it's a ball. Boggs bounced to Randolph. Shirley's up now. Bob Shirley's up with Fisher. He's not forgetting. One and one on Boggs. Bounced to Randolph, who turned it into a double play in the first, single to left center in the fourth, and was called out as a fan interfered with the fly ball down the left field line in the sixth. Base hit. They'll have to hold the runner at third. Getman scores. Yankees now lead 5-2. Boggs has just picked up his 51st run batted in and his second hit of the game. And the tying run will be coming to the plate. And the person of Bill Buckner. It is now 5-2. And Billy Martin will come out of the dugout to talk with Ron Gidry. Jackie Gutierrez started off the inning by flying to Winfield. Gedman hitting for Sullivan in a harmless ground ball. To Pagliarulo, he bobbled it. Instead of two outs, one out, man on first. Then Evans stroked one to center. That Henderson misjudged. Instead of three outs, it's a double, second and third. And Box with a clean single to left to make it five to two. Evans moving the third, runners at the corners, only one man out, and that's going to be it for Ron Gendry, who goes seven and a third innings and gets a great round of applause from the Red Sox crowd. And a tip of the cap. So Gendry goes seven and a third. Gives up seven hits. He walked one. And he struck out four Boston Red Sox. Gives up two runs, but he's responsible for those runners on base. And Bob Shirley will make his way in from the bullpen. Wade Boggs with a clean single to left to make this one a five to two ball game. He just strokes it to that opposite field. Evans, who was on second, had no eyes at all about trying to come home. But scoring is Gedman to make it five to two, and Evans parks himself at third. 
This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Yankees and WPIX, intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game, or any segment thereof without the express written consent of the New York Yankees, is prohibited. So Bob Shirley comes on, trying to protect the 5-2 to two lead for the New York Yankees. Shirley's second appearance of the year against the Red Sox back in April 23rd. He went three and a third innings. Gave up a hit and a run. Walked two and he struck out two. Last pitched in the opening game of the series against the Red Sox. Two shutout innings in which he gave up two base hits in a 10 to six New York Yankee victory. But he is in a key situation right here. The Yankees with a 5-2 to two lead. There is one man out in the bottom of the eighth inning. Dwight Evans is at third. Wade Boggs is at first base. And Bill Buckner, the left-handed hitter, will bat. Check that scoreboard, Bill. Toronto has uh, gone out in front with a run in the seventh over Kansas City, 3-2. to two. I think it's over. Looks like... Uh... They haven't put anything up there. Looks like Toronto's beaten Kansas City 3-2, and Cleveland has beaten Detroit 7-2. Oh, well, Brian Fisher better get ready, because surely this will probably be the only man he'll pitch to, the left-handed hitting uh, Billy Buckner, because Jim Rice and Tony Armas, two big right-handed hitters, are up next. Runners at first and third. One down. Buckner has popped up, bounced into a double play, and grounded to second. That the ground out in the sixth drove in a run. Ball one. Yankees five, Red Sox two, playing in the eighth inning. Sox trying to get back in the ball game. A home run would tie it. batting 287 he has 12 home runs 69 ribbies into center field and Henderson on the run again wind is really carrying the ball to center field this time Henderson back out and he's got it tagging a third scoring will be Evans and the Yankees now lead 5-3 Billy Martin coming out of the dugout we're going to get uh, Brian Fisher sacrifice fly and a run batted in for Bill Buckner his second RBI of the ball game Rice and Armas in next, and Martin signals to the bullpen for the right-hander, Brian Fisher. So Shirley pitches to one batter, gets the second out, but it's a long out. A sacrifice fly for Bill Buckner. It makes it 5-3. to three. And it'll now be up to Brian Fisher. By the way, the base hit by Bog Spencer, he's now hitting a 354. Of course, we don't know what the league leader, the uh, third baseman for Kansas City, George Brett, uh, did in the Toronto 3 2 win over Kansas City. He came into the day hitting at 355, did Brett. Ricky Henderson started the day at 348. He has gone one for four, so he'll drop down just a bit. Don Mattingly, who came into the game at 326, has gone three for four. So he's uh, up over 330 now, about uh, 331 or that vicinity. And Brian Fisher, who was very effective in uh, the Yankees' doubleheader sweep against the Cleveland Indians on Thursday evening. Pitched two innings in the first game, did not give up a hit, came back in the nightcap in the Yankees' 7-6 to six win, and walked away with a victory with two and two-thirds innings of two-hit pitching. Fisher has had but one bad outing really in his last 14 that was against the White Sox last Sunday when Tom Seaver won his 300 he went two and two thirds of an inning gave up four hits and two runs but scratch that one out and in his last 13 appearances he has given up but one earned run in 21 innings so Brian Fisher has found himself a job with the Yankees and has been effective. Here's the 
fly ball by Buckner stroke deep to center field. Henderson gets on his horse and really has to retreat but has his eye on it. And grabs it for the second out. That's Evans tagging up and scoring to make it a five to three game. With Boggs remaining at first. Two men are out. And the crowd response is Jim Rice comes up to the plate. That is the final they have up there now. It looks that way, Bill. 3 2 Toronto. Well, now we understand it's in the eighth inning, Spencer. Okay. I they don't have an inning up there, but evidently it's in the eighth inning and Toronto's leading Kansas City 3-2. And, of course, if uh, that game is over before this one, we will, or if it is indeed over, yeah. <laughs> there's something wrong with the ticker. Here's Rice, popped up, single, fly center field. Runner at first, two down, two low, ball one to Rice. I wonder about Cleveland and Detroit then. They don't have an inning up for that either. No, that's that's finished. That, that's, is, that finished. is that is over. Okay. Seven two Cleveland. Well, maybe we've got a seer out there in that uh, <laughs> manual scoreboard. He figures that's going to be the final score of Toronto Kansas City, and it's one and one here on Rice. Jim Rice, 19 home runs this year, 71 runs batted in. One and two as Fisher makes him hurry the bat. Rice hit his 19th home run yesterday in the loss to the Yankees. The Yankees winning that game seven to three after taking the opener 10-6. Back up the middle and he can take his time here and does. That's good play by Fisher. That ball hit him on his shins. And he took his time, picked it up, and threw out Rice. And the game, the inning is over. Two runs, two hits, one error, one left. At the end of eight, the Yankees lead Boston five to three. It's Bob Stanley playing. Bob Stanley playing the ninth inning with the Yankees leading by a score of five to three. And to strike one on Pagliarulo. He is struck out, grounded to second, and fly to center field. He'll be followed by Bobby Meacham and then Ricky Henderson. That's Gutierrez at short. Nice throw for the first out. Bob Stanley came on with second and third for the Yankees. In the eighth inning and nobody out and pitched out of it. This is Jim Rice again. That hard hit ball. It bounces off Fisher's leg. And he's cool, this young man. I'll yep. tell you knows how much time he has and he throws rice out in a very key situation pretty good soccer player too yeah <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Meacham batting over three and a strike looking ahead for the Bo Sox in the ninth inning against Fisher they'll have Armas Eastler and Marty Barrett one and one on Meacham Every year, every year and every ball game, Meacham looks more and more comfortable at shortstop. No chance for Boggs. One and two on Meacham. Talking about Dwight Gooden before. Headline writers are having a ball with Dwight Gooden. Today's headline the Boston paper, Gooden Plenty. <laughs> against Cubs. <laughs> A two out bunt foul and uh, Meacham strikes out for the second out. And that's the second strikeout for Bob Stanley. The Yankees had runners at first and third in the eighth inning and two runs in. They put the squeeze on. Weininger threw his bat at, at the ball and he was out. And uh, then uh, Mark Sullivan, who was catching them, threw to Boggs, and he tagged out Griffey. So here's Henderson, who's lost a point. He's at 348, 347 after coming in at 348. One for four in the game, and a strike on Henderson. That Toronto game is in the eighth inning. 3-2 Blue Jays. Toronto goes to Texas tomorrow to open up a series. 
because I remember watching Ken Kaiser give that strike call quickly. He used to take his time. Uh -huh. A la George Maloney, who I believe started that among the American League umpires. Maloney has since retired. Now Mr. Kaiser's quick with the strike call. Somebody said something that made Henderson laugh. There's two up balls on the strike on Henderson. Bit high. Three and one. Stanley has just walked to Henderson. And now he's got to worry about Ricky, who has 51 stolen bases and 55 attempts uh, this year. And Don Mattingly's a batter. They've got Mattingly up at the board at 329. Three for four in this ball game. Two singles and a double. Well, they thought he might be going, and he was not. I believe if they would throw three more pitch shots they'd catch Henderson going now whether they throw him out or not <laughs> it's another story it's only been thrown out once this year by Bob Boone of the Angels he was caught leaning three times well there's two yeah. two pitch shots <laughs> now he might as well go they won't throw three straight will they no I don't they're not going to throw three straight <laughs> Would. I'd just keep throwing pitch outs. Except on 3 and 0, I don't think I would. <laughs> now they're going to keep him close at first with this one. Of course, if Henderson does steal second base, they will pitch around Mattingly and go with Winfield. Pitch out on 3 and 0 is it an intentional walk. <laughs> there goes Henderson. And he Mattingly lines it right to Buckner. And that'll retire the side. No runs, no hits, a walk, and a man left after eight and a half innings of play. Yankees five, Boston three. He's three outs away from a three-game sweep for the Boston Red Sox. And in Kansas City, George Brett is homered in the eighth inning, his 16th homer of the year. Nobody aboard, so the Royals have tied the Blue Jays at three and three. A tough chore for Brian Fisher. He will have to face Tony Armas, Mike Eastler, and Marty Barrett, but the Yankees holding on to a two-run lead. Fisher came on in the eighth inning after Bob Shirley had pitched to one batter. Ron Guidry going seven and a third. Bill? All right, Spencer. Armas is 0 for three in the game. Lifts this one into right center, and Dave Winfield will take charge. For the first out, Armas. First ball hitting, skies to Winfield. <laughs> Winfield says, little fella, I'll take care. <laughs> he says, I think uh, Henderson is saying, you're over my territory. And Dave says, well, I don't like the way you played a couple of balls. I'll <laughs> let the sure man take it. <laughs> so there's one down. And here's Mike Eastler. Eastler slide the left single to center and struck out. He extends like a golfer after he swings at a ball. Ball one. That little uppercut swing and really takes the bat up. Good follow through. One and one. Why? Fisher with a chance to pick up his fifth save of the year. Dave Brigetti has 21 saves. Fisher four, 41. Three and one. There is no act 
activity in the Yankee bullpen. Three and two on Eastler. Yankees five runs, ten hits, one error. Charge to Mike Paliulo at third. The Red Sox three runs on seven hits. They played airless baseball. And we're in the ninth inning. a full count on Mike Eastler. Brian Fisher. And it's still three and two. It's all business out there Fisher. Just very determined young man. He's been a surprise. Had a good spring. He's called him up from Columbus. They gave him the baseball and said, do that. Rare back and throw fastballs. These people won't hit you too far or too often. And they're two outs. Here's the 3-2 pitch to Mike Eastler. And Eastler goes down swinging, so Fisher needs one more out, and Marty Barrett stands in his way from save number five and Guidry's 15th victory. Barrett is fly to center, line to third, and fly to center, 0 for 3. Vanella trying to get the Yankee infield outfielders to come in a little. Actually pointing to Winfield, trying to move Winfield in. Dave says, I see you, but I'm going to stay here. I'll cover it short. Two outs. Two strikes on Barrett. Yankees one out away from sweeping the Red Sox. Yankees and Red Sox open the season right here at Fenway Park earlier in the year. And the Red Sox won all three. Ned Martin on the radio side for Boston. Young lady who got that baseball. Got him with a breaking ball. The game is over. Fisher retired all four Red Sox batters he faced after coming on in the eighth inning in relief of Bob Shirley. Three up, three down in the ninth inning. The Yankees have swept all three from the Red Sox here at Fenway. Final score, Spencer. The Yankees five, Boston three. Well, the Yankees take a one nothing lead in the fourth inning on Ken Griffey's RBI single. Uh, single by Mattingly, triple by Winfield, and a double by Griffey. Two more in the sixth inning. They add two more in the eighth inning. RBIs for Winfield and Baylor take a 5-1 lead. Red Sox make it close with two runs in the eighth, but Brian Fisher comes on to record his fifth save of the season. Ron Guidry wins his 15th, and the Yankees have made it three in a row over the Sox. The Lions score five runs, ten hits, one error for New York, 3-7-0 for the Boston Red Sox. And that does it from Fenway Park in Boston, Massachusetts. Remember to tune in tomorrow.